I'm going to jump into exactly what I'm working on because I find these day in the lives can somewhat be useless if I'm just showing you me walking around my house making breakfast and sitting at my desk. And if you're aspiring to be a cloud engineer, it's much more beneficial if you know what you're actually going to be doing on a day to day basis, which is exactly why I've produced this diagram here, which is what we're going to go through. But please know I'm not doing any of this in the AWS console. It will all be done on Terraform with infrastructure as code. Now, what I'm currently working on is migrating a three tier web application from an old AWS account into our new AWS landing zone. If you don't know what a landing zone is, I highly recommend you go and watch my landing zone video, which covers how large scale cloud engineering actually works. That video is based on Azure, but the same concepts apply to AWS. The main part of that landing zone that I'm actually going to go through right now is the network management account. So as you can see, we're operating in the region of EU West 2. I have my network management account here and I have this account here. Let's just call it app one for the time being. Now, what I'll quickly talk you through is what the network management account is actually used for. Now, let's imagine you're going to a website and let's just say it's Google, okay? So that internet traffic needs to go somewhere. Now, if you're hosting stuff in AWS, primarily, you're gonna have a firewall. So that firewall is configured to allow certain network traffic to pass through into our landing zone. In our network management account, we have an internet gateway, configured to our VPC. I have three public subnets and three private subnets, which are all in separate availability zones to ensure that we have high availability at all times. Now this application specifically is only taking use of two availability zones, which is EU West 2A and EU West 2B. We have our NAT gateway in our public subnets to allow the internet traffic for our private resources. Now the private subnets, they primarily just have a network interface in there. And the reason for that is to allow the transit gateway to be able to have a hop to something. Now a transit gateway, just imagine it as a router, for example, is a cloud router that allows you to route traffic to different destinations. This account specifically doesn't really change that much once you've set it up. The only thing that will routinely change is if you bring in new accounts, you need to configure a new route table for your transit gateway and configure all of the routes. What we also have in here is an application load balancer, which is what I will show you what it is actually doing soon. And we also have Route 53 configured for all of our DNS, which helps us give our load balancer a friendlier name. Now let's take a look at what I'm actually doing. Now I have a VPC over here in my application account. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a couple private subnets in here. So I actually have two in here and they're in EUS 2A, as I briefly mentioned earlier and EUS 2B. Now the application I'm specifically using is actually using a AWS auto scaling group. Now, the reason for that, let's say network traffic becomes very high, there's a lot of utilization, we can quite easily add in more nodes to our application to make sure it remains up and all of our users can access that application. We are not using containers, we are actually using virtual machines which are running on Amazon Linux. Now, what does every application need? It requires a database. So in this specific scenario, we're actually using an Amazon RDS database running on Postgres. The next service I'm actually using is called an EFS, which is an elastic file system. The reason we're using this is because the application requires it to be able to store files pretty much. The application configuration itself is not being handled by me specifically. We have an application team that will be doing that. My job primarily is to get the architecture spun up and working, everything connected and secured and documented. Now, the next thing to do is make sure everything is assigned a security group. C2s will have their own security group, the RDS will have its own security group and the EFS will also have its own security group. Once this is all configured, there is a transit gateway at attachment, which is then assigned to this account. But that transit gateway attachment can't be assigned to this VPC until you've done a RAM share. A RAM share is where you share one resource from another account to the other one so it become present. So essentially what happens is the route table that you have on these private subnets you can then route to the transit gateway in the other account. So what happens is the network traffic comes through the internet, passes through the firewall, goes through the network management account, which hits the transit gateway, which then hits the application load balancer, which is set up on a target, passes through the attachment, because that's where the network traffic is recognized. Once it hits the attachment, it hits either EC2, either availability zone for whatever one is available at that time. Now, if you don't know how a load balancer works or what the function of a load balancer is, it essentially distributes traffic evenly to resources that your application is hosting. Now, how long does this actually take? Well, to get the initial design from the Solutions Architect and after I've reviewed it, that takes uh, maybe a day or two. Writing out all of the Terraform modules, some of them uh, was, was services that we haven't actually used before, like the EFS. 
that's a new one for me so that's a new module i've had to create a lot of the modules we already have so it's mainly a case of changing terraform variables and then configuring all of the security groups on top of that with whatever ports are required the tough part is understanding how all of these services work and how you actually get them all deployed uh what do i do for the rest of the day so i typically start at about 9 a.m i have a stand up at 10 a.m today i didn't have another meeting until 1 30 where we are actually discussing the migration for this specific application i'll usually go on a walk or a run during the day or i will go to the gym the weather in the uk is absolutely terrible at the moment so running and walking typically isn't on the cards so i will go to the gym so usually i'll do that on my lunch break or i'll just go in the evening when i'm not in meetings i'm pretty much writing terraform writing automation scripts looking at designs creating new designs and taking on any new client that needs to be delivered architecture on AWS. I hope that helps and gives you kind of an example of what a day in their life looks like. If you are aspiring to become a cloud engineer, leave a comment below. Let us know what position you're in at the moment. If you're already working in technology or you're waiting to get started or you're in the process of thinking of becoming a cloud engineer, you have a Discord that you can join where there's like-minded individuals helping each other out. The link will be in the description below. If you'd like to see any future videos like this covering typical day in the life content or diagram basis for projects that you could do from home because you could theoretically do this at home It'd be a little bit expensive obviously if you factored in the internet gateway and the NAT gateways but you could do the specific project I've done in your own AWS account fairly cheaply as always thank you all very much for watching